Hey, welcome to another Now in Android. This is episode number 19. Not a lot happened in the last couple of weeks because the team was pretty focused on creating stuff for launch content, uh, but I'll tell you about the stuff that did happen. Starting with launch content, you have probably heard this already, but we were going to have the Android 11 beta launch show on June 3rd. That has been postponed. Please check out the sites uh, for details about when that thing is coming out and what there will be when it does arrive. Uh, that should be updated very soon. Uh, also, Android Studio, the 4.0 release just came into the stable channel, so check that out. I've talked about uh, this release in various now in Android posts already, but uh, very quickly, some of the stuff that you can look forward to in that release include motion editor. So motion layout is a subclass of constraint layout that allows you to create easy transitions between states. Think of it as like the transitions API on steroids, right? It allows you to create a before state and an after state and then animate between them either automatically or this is the really powerful part, you can customize that animation and you can have it react to user gestures. So you can actually basically scrub the animation. You can scroll that screen and it'll run the animation uh, in direct interaction with the user actions, and then it can animate from there. Very cool, but really tedious to do in XML code. It was always meant to be driven by a visual tool, and now that visual tool is available in Android Studio 4.0, so check that out. Layout Inspector, substantially rewritten to offer such features as live updates. You can change the UI in the device and see those reflected in the tool. Uh, you can also use the 3D containment hierarchy viewer, so you can actually get a better feel for how all the different views and view groups relate to each other. And you can also see how the property attributes, those resources, where are they defined and why and how, and you can click through to go to the code that defines them. Uh, helps you understand your code a lot better. Build Analyzer, uh, another powerful feature that tells you where the bottlenecks of your build performance are. Uh, maybe it's in a library that you dragged in or something that you have impact on that you can change to affect your build performance locally. There's a blog post by Adarsh Fernando uh, where he goes over a lot of the details. Um, and there's also a video by Yassine Rezgi. Uh, he also gives a great overview of a lot of the powerful features in 4.0, so check those out. Um, articles and videos, Marat Yenner posted an article in the vocabulary, Kotlin vocabulary series, on reification. So generics are powerful. They allow you to add uh, compile time type information to APIs and data structures that may not otherwise support that information. That's great, except at runtime, you don't have access to that type information uh, because of something called type erasure. So basically, the type doesn't make it into the byte code and so you can't retrieve it at runtime. Colin has a workaround for that using the reified uh, keyword as well as inline classes capability. So if you declare something to be both reified and inline, it actually takes the type information and embeds it in the bytecode so that you can retrieve it at runtime. Marat also posted a video in the similarly named Kotlin vocabulary video series. Uh, and this basically goes hand in hand with the article that I talked about last time on object, on the, the Kotlin keyword object. Um, so check that out. Uh, there is an updated sample. So there was already a sample from Android 10 on how to use the Bubbles API, but Bubbles was a developer option. It was an optional uh, API at that point. We wanted developers to play with it, but users weren't really using it. Now it's a full uh, feature in Android 11, and you should learn about how to use it and about some of the changes that are taking place between Android 10 and Android 11. So that sample has been updated to be very Android 11 friendly, and you should check that out. Speaking of Bubbles, there's also a podcast that came out recently on Bubbles called Bubbles. So check out ADB 140, uh, in which Tor and Roma and I talked to Maddie as well as Artur on the system UI team about how Bubbles works under the hood, how you can use it, and how you can use the API and the capabilities to take conversations with people in your application and expose them into the UI for Android overall. Uh, as usual, all of the links for all of the stuff that I talked about are in the article, so check out the Medium article for episode 19. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share it and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.